Today, Intel revealed details on its Rocket Lake, Tiger Lake H35, not H, by the way, and Alder Lake products. Now, I will get to the H35 and Alder Lake uh, thoughts at the end of this video, but really, the majority of this is going to be on Rocket Lake products because, well, I have much more to say about those that's new because they talked so much more about them officially. So, Rocket Lake. If you go down into the comments on WCCF Tech or Video Cards, you'll see that... Well, as expected, the reactions to the official Rocket Link information are divided amongst the fanboy trenches. AMD fanboys are claiming that it doesn't mean anything and it won't be competitive at all. And as usual, Intel fanboys, hard to believe there are any anymore actually, are acting like AM dead is happening all over again and sooner than expected. The truth is, in brief, Rocket Lake will be successful, and I will recommend it at the right price. But it's going to have to be the right price, because without it, it's, well, let me get into it. It's a little misleading, as you might expect, how competitive Rocket Lake is going to be. The first thing to mention right away is that you will need to be careful if you have a Z490 motherboard before assuming that a new Rocket Lake CPU will simply drop in and have all of its features supported. I've been hearing for months that even some of the beefier Z490 boards don't have the proper power delivery to support power-hungry Rocket Lake. Pictured here powering up on a Z490 motherboard for the first time. But additionally, I've also heard that some of the motherboards may not support Gen 4 PCIe speeds at all, even if they can take the processor. So just, there's a dock right away. It's not going to be as compatible as you might think it's going to be with all the previous gen motherboards. Now, secondly, I also need to point out that Z590 will be slightly inferior to X570, uh, namely because of only one PCIe 4.0 NVMe device being supported at full speeds. That's right, X570 launched over a year ago with support for two PCIe 4.0 Gen 4 NVMe SSDs at the same time, in addition to 16 lanes being used by a Gen by PCIe 4.0 graphics card at the same time. But if you use two Gen 4 SSDs at once in Z590, and I had to double check this, and I'll feel real dumb if I get this wrong, but as far as I've been told by a couple of people in double checking, it'll run at Gen 3 speeds. So effectively, X570 supports one more of the latest SSDs at full speeds. And to me, that's somewhat unacceptable. I mean, this thing's been out for a year. Intel has had a long time to make a platform that's competitive with X570. X570 used to be expensive, but it's becoming cheap. And so, really, there's no argument here. X570 is getting cheap. It supports more of the latest, fastest SSDs at once. And Intel can't claim anything. If you buy Rocket Lake, you're getting an inferior platform. All right, so those are the first two things. The third thing to talk about when it comes to Rocket Lake, kind of dispelling the myth that this is just magically immediately catching up with Zen 3, is, well, as usual, Intel's performance claims. Now, there were a few pretty big red flags for me, uh, with the first one being, well, just how modest they were. Intel's own numbers show a slightly above 4% performance win over the 5900X on average, and again... Guys, these are Intel's cherry-picked numbers at 1080p only, showing a 4% win. Do I need to remind all of you how off Intel's cherry-picked numbers have been in the past? It, it, it was more than 4%, so that is huge. And additionally, it may not even be 4%. It may not even be a win, Multiple people are pointing out that Intel is claiming there could be a 15% margin of error with some of their performance claims. 15%? That's not a normal margin of error. That just means it may be weaker and they've picked the few games where it's not. So, yeah, that's something to look out for. Now, I did try to find this note on Intel's own website and it wasn't there, at least in the link I saw them provide. So, I guess that's worth mentioning, but at the same time, Tom's Hardware themselves is reporting on this. So for now, I'm going to point that out because I 
can trust that Tom's Hardware double checked this in the full slide deck. Uh, and finally, after those, all of that, let's just say it's true. Let's even be generous and say that it's a 5% win on average in gaming and 1080p, you know, Rocket Lake over Zen 3. Look, if it can manage to win by 5% or more in real benchmarks, I will suppose that would be okay. However, the fact is, I think this is an unlikely scenario considering they compared it to the 5900X 12-core processor in their own benchmarks. So that's a processor that, well, it may lose by 4% or even 5% in 1080p gaming, dominates it at absolutely everything else while using less energy and only costing, well, 10% more. So that's 11% more money than the 5800X, what they should have been comparing it to, for 4% more performance at best. And remember that the 5800X performs the same as the 5900X in gaming, oftentimes actually better at lower resolutions. And so again, that's just a huge red flag that they didn't compare it to what is, I'm assuming, going to be the cheaper 5800X. And I mean, frankly, the $300 5600X usually performs about the same too. So, yeah, I guess there's the three red flag, the three big problems I have with Rocket Lake that they I don't see enough people talking about right now. That's that. Number one, I have very real power concerns about the Z490 motherboards supporting these new Rocket Lake processors, despite being marketed as drop-in compatible. I also happen to know that... It has an inferior platform overall, even if you get the new one. So unless it's cheaper than X570, and there are cheaper X570s, it's a dubious choice, unless it's just flat out way cheaper. And number three, Intel's own performance claims are just littered with red flags that to me suggest that it's basically going to be a wash. And so that's what it is. That, again, that's really what it is when it comes to Rocket Lake. It's a wash. Rocket Lake will perform in gaming, probably tying Zen 3 overall. And so that is when a lot of people will jump in and say, wait, Tom, wait, remember that leak? The 11900K may be the top SKU with eight cores and 16 threads, but for now, we're under the impression that the 11700K i7 will also have eight cores and 16 threads. And so won't that be incredibly competitive? Well, look, it could come in with 5% lower performance than the i9, the i7 to the i9, despite having the same amount of cores. It really could. And if it does, then it ends up being a little weaker than the 5800X or the same performance while being a little cheaper if it's priced even remotely similar. So really, again, yeah, the 11700K, as I've said in recent Broken Silicons, could be a great product, but only if it's honestly $350 because we can play this all day you can say the 11700k is cheaper than the 5800x and i will just point out that the 5600x is cheaper than the 11700k the 5600x the 11700k the 5800x the 5900x and the 11900k all these processors are going to game the same the 5950x these are all going to perform about the same in games. And so really you want the cheapest one, which is the 5600X. And guess what? It will use less energy and it will become on a platform that supports more of the fastest SSDs. So that's it. That's really all I have to say about Rocket Lake. It needs to be priced aggressively to take market share. And it should be. You know, if it was up to me, I mean... Heck, if it was up to me, I wouldn't be calling the top SKU an i9 because it has less cores than the previous i9. I would just say, hey, no i9 this round, just i7s. But anyways, if it was up to me and they had to call it an i9, I would put that i9 at 400 and I'd put the i7-11700K at 300 because that's what you're dealing with. If you beat the 5600X narrowly, well, you only do so while using more energy on a worse platform, and so it has to cost the same. You can't win at one thing and lose at two or three other things coming out months later and try to demand a higher price. It's 2021. These are 14 nanometer products. They should be priced to sell, and if they are, they'll be good, but I suspect they will be priced just a little too high, and well, I guess we'll just have to see. That's about all I have to say about Rocket Lake. Of course, today, Intel also talked about, well... 
Tiger Lake H35 and Alder Lake. And when it comes to Tiger Lake H35, I do have to call it that because this is not the Tiger Lake H8 core I have been telling you about. This is a stop gap until the 8 core Tiger Lake H products can launch for high-end gaming notebooks. So for now, all I have to say is it makes sense, but it doesn't look very good comparing a quad core Tiger Lake that's just clocked faster against AMD's almost last gen Renoir APUs. Winning by around 20% means nothing when Cezanne is 25% better than Renoir. It's really all there is to say. This will launch right next to Cezanne and probably not be as good. And well, that brings us to Alder Lake. And I'll be pretty quick on this. Check out my last alternate Alder Lake leaks because those videos go into what I expect out of this hopefully impressive set of products coming out near the end of this year. All I have to really say from today's announcements is I hope they showed off that desktop holding Alder Lake, not out of desperation, not because they thought they had to show something, because let's be honest, they really didn't tell us anything, but because they know it's going to be good and they want to show a desktop running it early because it really does need to be good. That's all I have to say. Rocket Lake will only be okay if priced cheaply. Otherwise, it's a bust. Tiger Lake H35 is going to be crushed by Cezanne, and Tiger Lake H will be, will probably just tie in Cezanne at best. So Alder Lake needs to succeed this fall. And I hope it does. I hope competition is restored there. Although we'll probably be competing with Zen 3 Plus or some kind of Zen 3 refresh. So remember that. And actually, I do have one piece of new Alder Lake news to drop here. I don't believe I confirmed this before. Maybe I did, but based on what I've been told months ago, and now from another one of my best Intel sources, it's having trouble supporting Gen 5 NVMEs despite supporting PCIe 5.0. So it may come with PCIe 5.0 support, but not support Gen 5 SSDs. Now, to be fair, Gen 5 SSDs probably won't be out by the end of this year, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure this is a platform that's meant to last for years. So, I don't know. Already one red flag for Alder Lake. But I hope it's the only one. But the rest of that talk, talking about Alder Lake, will just have to come in upcoming videos. So that's going to just about do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will subscribe and ring the bell button so you don't miss all this other Alder Lake, Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD coverage coming out for the rest of 2021 from Moore's Law is Dead. And besides that, just remember that this channel would not be possible without its patrons supporting us. Remember that right now, $4 patrons got access to an ad-free version of the latest broken silicon and that the two dollar and up tiers got access to asking the guest questions ahead of time and then discussing it afterwards in the discord so just remember the patreon is out there that is what makes moore's laws dead possible and of course as always thank you for watching <laughs>